you can really say that today. If you are able, I ask you to stand where you are and declare those words. Very simple, but it's a hard thing to do. It's a simple, simple words, but it's hard. So if you believe it this morning, I want you right where you are to search your heart and pour out those words. I will trust in you, Lord. I will trust in you, Lord. I will trust in you, Lord. And we say, I will trust in you, Lord. I will trust in you, Lord. I will trust in you. Oh, I will put my trust. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We trust you, Lord. Even with the sudden changes of our lives, we trust you, Lord. Even during this transitional moment, we trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. Even in the new season, we trust you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for this day. And we ask you this morning that you will speak to our hearts. Speak to us, O oh Lord. Open our eyes, our ears, our hearts. Lord, I give myself away so you could use me. Speak, Lord. the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated, but don't get too comfortable. Are my children in the house? Are they back? Thank you for ushering us into the presence of the Lord. This is fresh oil. And today we are celebrating Youth Day, back to school week for some. It may be last week, it was your week. But I thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing me to be with you this morning. Thank you, Bishop and Lady Watts, Elder Martin, Elder Varner, Youth Ministry and the beautiful church. I feel like I'm at home. I wanna personally thank you for praying for my family and I the prayers of the righteous. I'm here with my family, my sister, the McCoys, and the Hayes right behind my children. And I asked a question this morning. Who is ready for school? I'm seeing some parents say no. Are we ready for school? If you, if you say, let me hear you, are you ready for school? Oh, wow. Okay. Well, guess what? I have a friend, and she is so excited for school. Okay, can I introduce you to my friend? Is Joy around? Is Joy around? Let's see. <gasps> Who knows Joy? Joy is ready for school. 
She is too excited, too happy. She's been counting down, okay? But I can tell you that I've been a little irritated, especially back in June when I was walking around after days, my, after school was over, walking around Target and already they had back to school signs. And I'm like, can we just enjoy summer, right, teachers? You see, we live in a world that is obsessed with the next. Distracting us and robbing us from the now. Obsessed with the next, and we are robbed in the now. And in the now, we are invited to rest. We are invited to be present. We are invited to live in the moment. We are invited to enjoy the season. But no, the culture that we live in, the world that we live in, wants to continue to add more, more, more next, where we lose the now. I mean, think about it. How many of you walked around any given store in the month of July, and you have Christmas merchandise already out, right? And all of this adds pressure, anxiety that builds clutter in our minds, our spaces, our inboxes, the algorithms. And though this is an exciting season for some, filled with joy, there are emotions that are connected to the season. For example, I'm gonna introduce you to some other, I will say friends because you know what, I, I've, I've, I've hung out with these folks, okay? So, is fear around? Where's fear? Fear? I'm looking for you, fear. Oh my goodness. Who knows fear? And during this season, for some reason, there's folks who are scared. For many reasons, afraid because, what, my children be safe at school? Or, oh my goodness, my child, you know, I mean, or in, and this is parents talking, okay? Now, imagine you, young people. Is there a young person here who could tell me maybe something that they may be afraid of regarding school? Fires. Fires. Somebody said teachers. That's real, okay. <laughs> okay, so fear, let's remember that fear. Fear, okay. D is, am I the only one that knows fear? Who else have hung out with fear? Okay. So my next friend is sadness. Sadness, are you around sadness? Oh my goodness. This is a season where people could also be sad because you know they're going away to school, especially for those moms who are dropping off their preschoolers and their kindergartners. Oh no, or maybe I'm sad because I don't want to go to school. Okay, sadness is real. How about embarrassed or shy? Is, sh uh, is he around? Let me see. Oh my goodness. I don't wanna talk in front of the class. I don't want the teacher to see me, right? Anyone here knows our friend's sadness? I mean, embarrassed? Okay, let me, now let me, let me tell you about this next friend of mine. She is real, the real deal. And she gets on my nerves, but she's, it's hard sometimes to push her away. And her name is Anxiety. Anxiety, where are you? Oh, Anxiety. Who here knows Anxiety? Look at, look at the hands, Bishop, like your anxiety. Yeah, we need to pray for anxiety. How about envy? Like, I don't want to go to school because everyone's going to look better than I look. Envy, are you around? Okay. How about boredom? I just don't want to go. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted, Ugh, do I need to go? It's too early. Anger, is anger around? Oh, leave me alone or I'll meet you outside after school. Right, these are real emotions. 
parents take note, but children take note because we know about these emotions. And they're real, they're real. And they're so much a part of our human condition. For example, I kind of have a feeling that Jesus' disciples knew something about these emotions, especially as they re-entered into a new season without Jesus. In the book of Acts, we see that the disciples were called to be witnesses for Christ. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, they were sent to testify in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now again, their Messiah was no longer with them, so yes, I am pretty sure that some of them were dealing with some anxiety, some fear, perhaps they were angry, they were sad, and I can't stop but think of the images I've seen in the series The Chosen. Have anybody seen The Chosen? Oh, you need to watch it. Yes, right? So I think about Peter and Matthew, right? Like, I mean, you, that's just so real. However, the disciples in all of these emotions, because these emotions are real, so I don't want to push these emotions away. They're real, okay? The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 13, okay, that though they were out there filled with the Spirit, it says the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Say it with me, joy. Joy. Now let me be clear, there is a big difference between earthly joy and the joy of the Lord. We've been hearing a lot of joy lately. And it's so important in these days that we're living in. But let me break it down because earthly joy, are you ready? Because when I was looking this stuff up and I was reading and I was thinking about my own life, there was a lot of ouch moments for me, okay? So earthly joy is typically dependent on external factors such as achievements, possessions, relationships, or experiences. Earthly joy is often more surface level, related to moments of happiness or pleasure. It can be intense, but it's usually short-lived diminishing, diminishing as circumstances change. Earthly joy is often linked to mater material gains, sensory pleasure, or social status, and can be easily disrupted by life's challenges. You see, earthly joy often fades when circumstances change, such as when success turns into failure or when possessions are lost. Earthly joy is based on worldly conditions. Earthly joy can be unstable and unpredictable, leading to discontent or despair when conditions are not met. Who here know a little bit about earthly joy? But I'm here to tell you something about the joy of the Lord. Yeah. See, the joy of the Lord is deeply rooted in a relationship with God, and it is a fruit of the Holy Spirit, as we see in Galatians. It is based on knowledge of God's love, grace, and promises, and it is often transcends circumstances. The joy of the Lord is connected to the eternal perspective of salvation. God's faithfulness and the hope of eternal life, as we see in Romans chapter 15. It is not dependent on external conditions, but on the unchanging nature of the Almighty God. See, the joy of the Lord is characterized by a deep, abiding sense of peace and contentment that comes from knowing and trusting in God. It persists even in the trials and suffering because it is anchored in faith. The joy of the Lord is a spiritual joy that flows from the presence of God, and it is often associated, as we saw and, and, and engaged in today, through worship, prayer, and obedience to God's will. The joy of the Lord is sustainable because it is not depending on the ups and downs of life. It endures through trials, pain, suffering, and even death because it is based on the unwavering truth of God's promises. You see, the joy of the Lord, there is strength in the joy of the Lord. It, it gives us strength, giving us the resilience to face difficulties when hope and trust is needed. I mean, we see when Nehemiah, we're at 810, the joy of the Lord is... The joy of the Lord is? Constant. 
my strength. Joy is saying yes to the Lord, even when it does not make sense. I mean, who here knows a song by Daryl Evans? I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. And we say, come on, I'm, I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. And with joy we can say, we say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. All right. That's the joy of the Lord. You see, we can keep going. Oh, y'all want to keep going? Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. How many of us are willing to lay down, fill in the blank, for the joy of the Lord? Now, today's passage brings me joy, for it is a promise that is being fulfilled right now. Not next week. Right now. See, in the book of Acts chapter 2, we see Peter standing before the crowd on the day of Pentecost, quoting the prophet Joel. And he says, in the last day, God says, I will pour out my spirit in all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men and, I will say women, will see visions. Your young men and women will dream. Your old men and women will dream dreams. Here we see and hear Peter declaring something radical. He said that in the last days, and I don't know about you, but we are in these days, God's spirit will be poured out on all people, not some, on all people. It would ignite the voices of our children as we heard today. Today's passage tells us that our sons and daughters will prophesy. See, prophecy in its simplest form is the proclamation of God's truth. It's a declaration of his will, his plans, and his heart. Our children often in their innocence and purity can sometimes hear and see what we, adults, in our busyness, busyness and complexity overlook. Their simple faith can be a vessel for profound truth. Jesus himself told us to be like children to enter the kingdom of heaven. This is not about being naive, but about openness and trust. Our children can teach us so much about God if we are willing to listen. We must create spaces where their voices can be heard, where their thoughts are valued, where their dreams are encouraged. And I have to say that the enemy thinks he's slick. Because his tactics are to kill, steal, and de steal and destroy. And he is so threatened right now with our children that even in the womb, he's trying to mess them up. I mean, think about it. So now we are seeing children, going back to all of my friends, okay? They are allowing these, into, these, these feelings and emotions to dictate and to lead them. See, the enemy doesn't want our children and teens to see the word of God, his promises come to fruition. But this morning I have come on assignment to tell you as Peter did on the day of Pentecost, that today the Lord is pouring out his spirit on all of us, all his people, and our children will prophesy. Our young men and women will see, they will see the vision, and our old men and women will dream dreams because something is happening in the spirit realm we must be awake aware and aligned with the things of the spirit the spirit of the lord is here the spirit is moving shifting in the suddenly and pouring itself into open and willing vessels and the spirit brings joy of the Lord to accompany us on this journey into this new season because let me tell you, joy is contagious. 
Joy is contagious. There are people that are going to look at you and they're going to say, how is it possible? And you're going to say, because the joy of the Lord is my strength. When I lost my husband two years ago, suddenly, okay, I know what pain is. And I could tell you that there's this thing that we do, and I'll say it's churchy language, be strong, be strong. Listen, we don't have the human capacity to be strong when somebody dies. So I would say we gotta change our language, be strong in the Lord. Because it is only by the strength of God, by the strength of God. I don't have strength. I did not have strength. But the strength of the Lord. And you know what? That comes with joy. Because I didn't understand how I could grieve and I have joy at the same time. And people are watching, people are seeing, and they want some of that. Because in there, there is hope. Joy is contagious. Now, as a practical theologian, I ask myself, how do we make sense of all of this, right? The Lord is speaking to us. He's pouring his anointing, his spirit. There's fresh oil. Things are happening. Things are changing. And as I was praying, the Lord gave me three words. Awake, aware, and align. So the first step in experiencing God's power is being awake. Spiritually alert and aware of God's presence. See, in Acts 2, the disciples were gathered together and suddenly, say suddenly, they were awakened to the reality of God's spirit being poured out on them. The world around them was changing, say changing, and they were fully awake to it. How many of you can say and testify that the world is changing right in front of our eyes? So it's easy to get caught up in the busyness of life, school, work, sports, friendship, social media, and future plans, but God is calling you to be awake to something greater. He's calling you to be spiritually alert. We need discernment more than ever. Parents, we need to discernment more than ever. We need to know how to pray for our children, what to pray for. We can no longer operate in these surface of prayers. Lord, bless them and guide them. No, we got to break it down. We got to get to the roots. So many times, you know, I, I have this vision. We are all about, let me, you know, there's a bunch of spider webs. Let's just clear it all up and clean it out. No, let me look for the spider and kill it. Let's go back to the roots of things. He's calling us you to be spiritually alert, to recognize that his spirit is at work now, not next week, right now, in this moment, in this very hour. Being awake, check this out, being awake means having, being ready to respond to God's call at any given moment. Tell your neighbor to wake up. Say, wake up. Kairos, tell them, wake up. The next thing we need is to be aware of what God is doing, aware of his vision for our lives and the world around us. You see, Acts 2, 17 says, your young men and women will see visions. Now, to be aware is to see, to have clarity. But how are we able to see when all of these other friends are hanging out and like blocking? They're blocking my view. So I have anxiety blocking me. I have fear. I'm just like, have no, I'm just hanging in there. How are we able to be aware and have clarity? You see, it's hard to clearly see if our lives are being led by these other emotions. Being aware means understanding that God has a unique plan. It is about seeing beyond the ordinary and recognizing that God has equipped you with gifts, talents, treasures, and a purpose that aligns with his kingdom. God wants to reveal his plan, but we must wake up and we must also open our eyes. Because I don't know about you, how many of you have been awake in your bed, but your eyes are closed? Oh, I'm up, I'm up, right? I'm up, I'm up. And I have to tell you that for some of us, opening our eyes will hurt. Because that light is sharp. The light is sharp, if you know what I mean. 
So tell your neighbor to wake up and open your eyes. Now we, the spirit is, let me tell you, the spirit is active. So if you are just caught up with just thinking that you're gonna stay right here in your pew or in your bed, just hanging out with the Holy Spirit, that's not how it works, okay? The Lord is calling us out. The spirit is moving, there's changes happening. Okay, so we must be ready to be aligned with God's spirit. It is not enough to be awake and aware. We must also be aligned with God's will, his way, and his time. We must walk in step. We must be in beat, not off beat, with the spirit as he leads us. Because the text reveals that the disciples didn't just experience the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that was, and they were full of joy. See, they aligned their lives with God's mission, proclaiming the gospel boldly and living out their faith. They were moving, they were walking, they were speaking, they were, yes, fear was in the way, perhaps some of them were shy, but they were willing to press through that and allow that joy, allow that promise that God has gave, given them to, to, to allow them to release and to be who they were called to be. Alignment means allowing God's spirit to guide. Your actions, decisions, and priorities. Parents, our children are about to go to school. And I have to say, some of us parents, I speak to myself, I know I have to prepare myself mentally, spiritually, and physically. Okay? But I also know that things are moving and changing. So, you know, how are we sending our children off to school? I have to be honest, I'm not a morning person, and I saw that there was a season in my life that I was rushing and rushing my children because I woke up late. And then I'm fighting with them and sending them off irritated, and guess what? Our children are now not only hanging out with their own emotions, but they're carrying ours to school. And a lot of it, and I could just give you one example, anxiety right there, that's an energy that we feel from a distance sometimes. And a lot of times, that's where generational curses are all connected into that. You see, if we have not been healed and take care of ourselves, our children are walking and carrying a lot of that stuff. So I invite you to hang out with the Holy Spirit because this is not we can only depend on our pastors and our leaders. We are living in a time that the spirit is moving and he's doing big things. Listen, a lot of people are screaming for revival. And when we say revival, we are acknowledging that we were dead. Okay? When we are saying awaken, we are acknowledging that we were asleep. And it's not going to be like it was. You know what? We could have revival by ourselves in our room. Okay, because it is an internal, intimate thing between you and the Lord. It is not a revival service of a 24-hour service nonstop. That's, that's, like, that's like supplement, okay? Those are great things. But how are we willing and able to continue to walk this life and be steady in it? So parents, let me go back to my story. So I will send my children off. And it was sad, like I would feel guilty, convicted, because I'm rushing them, and I realized, wait, I gotta get myself together. So I had to wake up a little earlier, but that was not enough. The Lord was like, I need you to spend time with me so you could pour into them before you send them off. So now I gotta wake up even earlier. Because I'm like, okay, let me get up, now let me sit down and spend some time, and then let me, but it was a discipline and I'm, I, I, I'm, it's hard, but it was what is needed because our children are receiving those five or six or seven, eight hours. Things are being poured into them, but how are we pouring into them? And what better way to be the first ones to pour and block some of that stuff? I'm not saying you gotta use churchy language. Be yourself in it because the Spirit of the Lord will give you the language, okay? 
This is, you know, I have to say this again, Bishop, because I think sometimes we're living in a time that people think it's all about this. And God is saying, no, 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 the spirit, I'm, I, I, you could do this with me. Walk outside, let me show you how to do this. We need to protect our children. And it's not about the material things, it's about the spiritual. See, people are caught up removing things from school. It's not even about that. It's about, you know what, we're living in this world that we know is not the Lord. We know that the world, you know, we're just, we're just pilgrims passing by. Don't be surprised at what we're seeing. We can't, I mean, this is, but one thing I can say is that even as the spirit is moving and things may get rough, they may get tough, but I truly believe that the people of God are going to be at a place of just grace and joy because it will not make sense. It's not gonna make sense. How are we pouring into our children? How do we set the tone daily for them? How do we receive them when they get home? How are we receiving our children? Children, how are you coming home? What can you share with your parents? Because the Lord is saying that he is pouring his spirit on all of us. And this is a multi-generational word. This is a multi-generational church. And it's all connected. Because one will hear, the other will see, and the other will dream. But what beauty is when we come together and we're sharing it together. Because I may see something that maybe you heard, you heard, and it's adding to the story, right? So we need to spend more time together. I was forced to do that. When my husband passed, my parents went down south and scooped my children and I up, brought us home. And I live in a multi-generational home right now. And I'm right in the middle. My two little ones and my two parents, my parents. And it's a bilingual home, it's a cross-cultural home. There's a lot of engagement happening. But one thing I can say, we didn't know what we were doing, but the Spirit was doing it, was that the Lord was showing us how to heal together. I, from the beginning to my father, I want you to cry in front of my kids. So he would just cry in front of my children. We would cope, we were speaking, and I can also testify this day that I am here today because of my children. Because my children, my children already understood. They were prophetic. They were saying, mommy, it's okay, daddy's with Jesus. Without no, like, he's with Jesus, what are you, what are you talking about? I mean, there were moments that Every time Kairos would hear that someone died, he'd be like, but shouldn't we be excited? He, they were Jesus. And I'm like, Kairos, don't be like, you know, don't be all excited. Some people don't want to hear that. But he was so excited because they're with Jesus. So what kind of message are we teaching our children? We want them to have joy. And don't get me wrong, there is room for both. We must mourn and we must grieve. That is very important. And we must make room for that. And in our home, because the Lord was establishing something so sweet, we were so open to the spirit that even nature began to speak to us. I mean, this spring we had, I would say like five different family of birds building nests in every entry of our house, every entryway of our house. And that spoke of the fact that they're, they feel safe. You know, and we were just seeing God and spending time to really understand this is God. The Spirit of the Lord is here. But it was also beautiful because, again, my father was much spiritual wisdom pouring into me. My son pouring into my dad. You know, I'm receiving or sharing. Like, it's just like this whole thing happening. And I just want to say that obviously my story is different. But I encourage all of us to be intentional in doing life together. Especially in this new season. 
Our children have enough stuff. What this stuff, what this is, is profound. There is something it's beautiful because these are seeds that are everlasting. So on this day, the Lord has been clear. We must be awake. We must be aware and be willing to be aligned as we embrace his spirit and joy. We must, be, we must be willing to courageously accept the new things that are coming. They're not always comfortable, but they are necessary. And I will say that as we begin to do life intentionally, allow there to be a great exchange among ourselves where we are sharing, where we are pouring into each other and do not silence our children because they are speaking and they are clear and they know what they're hearing. Even when they come to heed warning. So let us take this time right where you are. What is the Spirit sharing with you this morning? Awake, aware, aligned. We must wake up. We must open our eyes. to move, to be aligned with the Spirit. I'm going to invite our children and youth to come up. Let's give a hand. I want you to turn around and look at the congregation. Keilani Kairos, come up. to sing that the chorus of that song I would trust you because you are pouring that out to us you are speaking to us and that those words of I would trust because you with so much anointed release those words and that reminder that in this season even with our emotional friends wanting to hang out We choose joy because we trust the Lord even when it doesn't make sense. So children, sing those words over the adults right now. Speak that into them right now.
want to invite, if you are a parent or a caregiver, to come up because these, your child is going to pray for you. Okay? Receive what they are going to pour into you today. They have spoken very clear this morning. And children, right where you are, just allow the Spirit to use you. Just allow it to flow. Just allow the Lord to just speak. If there's a child without a parent, youth pastors, leaders, leaders, this is where we step in.
this. I want to say this. It's exhausting. But the Lord is pouring a fresh anointing over you all. Because you may be the only Jesus that they will meet and encounter. So do not go with your strength, because guess what? It's gonna be it's gonna tap out the first day. I pray that you're able to allow the Spirit of the Lord to daily pour into you when there's an overflow, so much so that when you get home, you can still pour into your family. Because that's what God is doing. Do not limit God. Do not limit God. Be ready. This year's going to be different for many of you when it comes to the spiritual thing. Because people are hungry. Our children need to feel love. And God is love. Even that one kid who gets on your nerves, you know what? It's okay. Because God loves them. And perhaps we may need to even change how we pray. Lord, maybe open my eyes to see the children, the teens, the adults, whoever I serve, the way you see them. Let me see through your eyes. Oh Lord that's a courageous prayer but if the Lord will bring you to it he will bring you through it and you're not doing this by mistake this is not just a job this is your calling your vocation this is the very thing that you have said yes to so some of us may be going to work every day saying, I'm trading my whatever that is for your joy, Lord. Give me joy. Give me joy. Give me joy. Because you already know the truth. You already know what's up. But we cannot lose the opportunity daily. So let us pray. Janetta, can we get the anointing oil? We are going to anoint our teachers and educators. And I want you where you are to extend your hands. I am seeing in this space, and this is beautiful, we have preschool, we have elementary, middle, high school, adult education, Listen, where is our Christian education person in the church? You need to come up here too, because that is a part of what, this is, that, that's work too. Okay, that is a whole other, that is work. So if you are not up here, I need you up here as well. Bishop, we're praying for you too as you continue to lead at the institution that you work at as well, you lead. So right where you are, extend your hands. Father God, we need you. As simple as that. Because all of these, these little spirits, these little emotions are kicking in. Father God, I want joy to be the one that is managing. So I want joy to just tell anxiety to release. I need joy to tell fear to release. I need joy to tell boredom, because some of us are bored in our jobs, to release, give me joy, ignite that joy. Oh, joy, release envy, because I may want this other job, but God is telling you, no, 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 no. I've placed you on purpose there for such a time. Father God, that we can fully just walk daily dependent only on you. That you will give us all that we need for such a time. Thank you, Lord, for choosing our beautiful women and men to lead, to teach, to cover, and to be your hands, your feet, your voice. 
we declare that this year will be different in a good way. Even when it may look the, bad, the worst of it all, possibly, but they're not even going to see it that way because you're covering them and you are allowing them to see through a new lens. A lot of them are going to be activated in so many ways that they're going to see themselves in their role like never before. Warriors. So Lord, we thank you. Have your way. Have your way. Protect them. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And I will continue to pray as we press on, press on for the new, this new year, this new season. And if there's anyone here who wants some of that joy, who wants Jesus, who have not accepted Jesus, I want to make sure that we make that invitation. If that's you this morning and you would like prayer, we're going to ask you to stand where you are, to come up front, or to see me or one of the leaders after, because we will pray with you. But just know this, that even if you walk home, you could go to your room tonight, or even in your car, and say, Jesus, I need you. And don't get scared if he shows up and says, hey, I'm here. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the lives that recognizes that you are the only way, the truth, and the life, Lord. And I ask right now, Lord, as they have courageously st stood up, Lord, that you will meet them right now, O Holy Spirit. That the exchange that is occurring right now will be one that will continue even as they walk out of these doors. And that they will, are reminded that they are loved. Even as they surrender their sin and, and ask for forgiveness, Lord, you reminding them that you love them. And today is a new day, it's a new start, a fresh start for a new season. And I pray that if they don't have a home, that they could find this to be their home. If not, Lord, that you will lead them to where that may be. May they feel you like never before today, for it is a new day. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this house, because this house will not be the same. This house have opened its doors to the voices of the children. The voices of our young people and those who are dreaming dreams. So I pray for Bishop, the leadership team, even as you continue to reveal to them the things that are new, that they be open to the moving of your spirit and that you will give them the strategy and the vision to continue to build your kingdom here on earth for such a time. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, amen.